Good morning. They finally let me back up on the mic. All righty. I usually like to start my sermons, as you guys know, with a ridiculously easy question, just to get your minds working a little bit beforehand. So on that note, my question is today, by a show of hands here, who has ever received a gift? Okay, good. That's the answer I was looking for. Um, in life, you received many different gifts, some big, some small. One big gift that I can really remember um, is... I got it when I was about 12 years old. I wanted to try something new. So um, around that time, I was in a, enrolled in a couple of music classes. So um, it turns out the thing that I decided to choose was a more expensive option. <laughs> uh, and of course, that was I learned how to play the guitar. Now, when I first started, I had to figure out s t- uh, some things to how to teach myself how to play it. One, I, had to made a, I made a list of things I had to do. One, I had to have a device that I could learn on it, easy, easily learning chords, tuning my guitar, because to this day, I still cannot tune it without my phone. Um, I needed some accessories for it. I needed, uh, of course, an amplifier so it could make loud noises, which, let's be honest here, loud noises are the best. So, um, I needed a lot of guitar picks. When I first started, someone told me, you will never have too many guitar picks, and boy, were they right, because I cannot keep track of them. Um, So for Christmas, I begged, and I begged for one. Mom can attest to that. I was so excited on my new journey on how to learn how to play this instrument. So on Christmas morning, I came downstairs, and I opened up a big box, and there it was, my first ever guitar. God gives us some pretty big gifts at times. Can we agree? But I think we can also agree that we sometimes take those gifts for granted. I was reading a verse in Ephesians about God's great gift of grace. Can anyone guess what verse it is? Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't think about that one. <laughs> well, you're right. It was Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 8, which says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The greatest gift that God has given us is grace. And that through Jesus Christ that we can have eternal life. Now that love was driven by God's love for us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I mean, is there any bigger gift than that? But again, we sometimes take that uh, gift for granted. <coughs> and well, we, we can take several parts of that for granted. <coughs> I gotta clear my throat a bit. Um, we, sometimes we take God himself for granted, we take his grace for granted, and we take his time for granted. Now with every blessing, it is very important that we don't take God for granted. I mean, he's given us everything that we have even though in reality, we don't deserve it. It's hard to look at your life and think about where you sometimes take God for granted. I mean, in writing this sermon, I had to think about where I take God for granted, and to be quite honest, I have a lot of room for improvement. But I want you to think about that. Where in my life do I take God himself for granted? Do we sometimes forget that our God is the God of the universe that created us and everything there is? And essentially, that we don't take God's character for granted and even forget what God's character is. Psalms uh, chapter 100, verse 5 says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalms chapter 145, verse 9 says, That the Lord, get how I'm putting emphasis on the Lord, is good to all. He is compassionate on all he has made. We should not take God for granted because he is good. In Costa Rica, um, over the summer, the trip that we took to Costa Rica, God gave our group the opportunity to see how much we really do have. There was the poverty that we saw all around us, making us take another look and be more grateful for what we do really have. I will say, though, the most humbling experience down there was just how much they appreciated God for what they did have. When I sat down and really thought about how great our God is, it really humbled me. 
Writing this sermon has given me the chance to see how often I take God and his gifts for granted. Another thing that sometimes is taken for granted is God's grace. God has given us such an amazing a gift, and that is his grace. And going back to the point I brought up earlier, that our God is the God of the universe. The one who gives us everything, and the fact that he would show us any form of grace just goes to prove how much of a loving, merciful, and graceful God we really do have. Something that has really hit me hard this past year has been just how much grace God shows me. Even through all the junk that's been happening this year, it's just really humbling to see how much God has just given me and just um, how he continues to stay with me, even through the dark times. It, humbled, it humbles me to know that even though God does not need me at all, he still chose to send his son to die for me and give me grace. Isn't that amazing? Now, we first need to clarify the difference between grace and mercy. Mercy is essentially not giving us what we deserve, and grace is, grace is giving us what we don't deserve. So when we're looking at our lives, we all have sin in our lives. Therefore, we all deserve death, refer referencing to, of course, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, uh, for all those who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So just looking at this verse, we see that we all have failed and that none of us are perfect. And we all still have sin in our lives, and the price of sin is death. So just by looking at this verse, we see that we deserve death and eternal separation from God. But thank God himself that that's not the end of the story. God did not want us separated from him. So he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of all mankind. So now God has shown us mercy. And then he does more. Through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, he offers us life, and not just new life, but eternal life. Life that does not end. Jesus defeated death so that whoever believes in him won't have to experience the eternal separation from the Heavenly Father. It is important that we don't take God's grace for granted because we don't even deserve it. So with that, it, grace, it is important that we do not take God's time for granted. This past year, as many of you know, I have... Um, gotten to know life does not run on my own timing. I have learned that through a lot of hard times and also a lot of good times, that life does not run on our timing. And that got me thinking about how I sometimes take time for granted itself. As many of you know, this past year, uh, we lost our grandfather, me and, my, me and Alex did. Um, and during that two-week period, I was extremely angry at God for um, what was happening. And um, really, when I was writing this, it got me thinking a lot about how we all assumed that we have all this time. But to be quite frank, we don't know how much time we have left. I was talking with a friend a while back about, um, he was asking me about how I made that decision to get baptized. I said, um, because I needed, I knew, I know that I needed to make a change. I needed to learn how to give my life up to God and just how much, and just really accept how much he loves me and that gift of grace. And then my friend, I, t I asked my friend, what's stopping you from doing it? He, t he told me the timing. There is no better time than the present because we don't know how much time we have left. We always seem to think that we have more time than what we actually have. And in reality, we don't know how much we have left. Now, it is very known that there will be a day where the world will end and Christ will return. Get how I say the world will end. The earth shall not end. God will reform the earth back to the way it was supposed to be. Sin will be cast out forever and ever, and those who believe in him shall have life. It's no better thing than that. No better. 
The main issue with being prepared for that day is the obvious. We don't actually know when it's going to be. That being said, we should go through each day knowing that that day may be today. Matthew chapter 24, verse 44 says, Therefore, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. With that being said, we should always live our life knowing that Jesus can come back at any moment. Now, I don't tell you that to, to scare you, in a way, but in a way, we don't know when he's coming back. So we should always just keep living our lives like he's right there next to us, ready to take us home. So we should strive to make sure that we are trying to not sin and not using our forgiveness as an excuse to sin. Now, obviously, nobody is perfect, but we should use the grace that we have been given to glorify God for just how truly amazing he is. I want to say one more thing about God's grace. It is without a doubt that this world is changing. Every time you turn on the news channel, you might not see something you, you like to see. This world is getting much, much darker very quickly. And it seems that the world is turning its back on God. So with all, we cannot deny that this is happening. But there's one thing that's still saying the same. His word. No matter no matter what's going on in the world, our mission has still not changed. And better yet, our God has not changed. In our world today, it seems to be filled with so much darkness that we do not even know what the future holds. But there is one thing that we can control, what we do with our calling, our message, and God's word. Even though this world may change throughout generations, our mission will still always stay the same. Lead others to Christ. To tell our stories. And to tell them his story. And through trying to live by Christ's example each day, we can show people this amazing grace that God has given us. I just challenge you to think about that. God has loved every single one of you enough that he sent his son to die for you. Now, I know there have been some pretty big gifts that people have gotten in their life, but who here can tell me that they've ever gotten a gift bigger than that? Exactly. There is no better gift than that. There is no bigger gift than that. The love that God has for us is the best kind of love there is. So to conclude here today, I challenge you to take some time and reflect. To reflect on some things that we take for granted. Whether that be our schedules, our families. Sometimes it's hard to take uh, finding time for God in the morning for granted because we're so busy and we're so lost in our schedules. If you take anything from today, I want it to be this. It is important that we do not take God for granted. Because if God rebuked us as our sins require, we would not be able to stand before him. He is a consuming fire, and apart from his grace, we would be burnt to dust. God does not change. His word has always been repent. He is with us. Our God has given us this amazing gift of love. This gift of grace. And with my story with the guitar, obviously God has used that to glorify him. That instrument right there, it's not me who's doing that. It's all God. So with this amazing gift of love, this gift of grace that God has given us, let's be grateful for it. Can I pray with you guys real quick? God, we just thank you for today. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to come here today, God. We thank you for the fact that you give us this freedom that we don't deserve, God. 
that no matter what happens in our lives, God, we can still look up to you and say, Father, I need you. God, your grace is free, but it was not free for the one who paid for it. So I pray that as we think about that, God, that we just wouldn't forget how much it really cost Jesus on that cross for us. And that if you did rebuke us, God, for, for what we do, uh, for what we sin as, from what sin requires, God, we wouldn't be able to stand in your presence. I just pray for everyone here today, God. I just pray that they would hear the words that I have spoken today, God, and know that they're not my words. They're yours. For I am just a man, God, but you are the God of the heavens and the earth and the universe who created everything. And I just pray that this, even though this world may get dark, God, even though this world may seem hopeless at times, for us not to forget what our calling is. To go out and make disciples, God. To go out and praise you and show your glory. I just pray for every heart here, God. Not, not the hearts just here, but outside of here, God, that with our words we can, or with your words, actually, that we can soften their hearts, God. That we can show them a way that, to everlasting life that is you. I pray for each gift that you give us, God, every day. Because we don't deserve them, God. You are such a great God with so much love for his creation. Just help us to appreciate that grace. In your name we pray. Amen.